We've been speaking a lot about some bad news in the uh, South African uh, economy and socio-economic scene. Let's talk about let's talk about now some good news from one of South Africa's corporates, the star of the JSC of late. The company's name is Ellie's. Have a listen to this. Ellie's Holdings today released interim results for the six months ended the 31st of October of last year with a phenomenal. It says here. This is a press release from the company, by the way. Phenomenal increase of 102.4% in headline earnings per share to 42.46 cents. In the studio in Johannesburg now is the CEO of Ellie's, and that's Wayne Sampson. Wayne, thanks very much for joining us this lunchtime, right. and congratulations on those numbers. Thank you very much. Um, you go on to say in that same press release, uh, just sorry, before you go on, yeah. we are exceptionally pleased with these results, especially with the growth achieved through new product lines, as well as solid relationships created with leading suppliers in the lighting field. I think you're talking about Aurora there. And before again, you, you comment on what I've just said, I think one of the strengths of Ellie's is the diversification. Diversification is important in uh, investment. And I think when you look at a company, the diversification of a company must also be a consideration when looking at that company. Most definitely. Uh, we've concentrated on diversification quite a bit over the last few years. And we've particularly targeted areas where we believe South Africa and Africa is going to be heading. Uh, and that being the energy efficiency and renewable energy sectors. Uh, we've invested quite a bit in the uh, infrastructural side and the telecom side. And on the commercial side now with uh, uh, good partnerships with the likes of Aurora and Effigy. And uh, we'd like to at the same time as having the products educate the market and educate the consumer on the benefits of energy efficiency. Yeah, we'll come to that uh, in a moment. Uh, talking about the diversification and the sort of spread of your portfolio, still consumer goods and the services division, I think is around about 60 to 65 percent of your business. And that division, it says here, delivered a 61 percent increase in revenue to 750 million rand. How did you achieve that? I mean, is, is it the buoyancy of the South African consumer or are you doing something different? Uh, in those figures, uh, we also uh, had uh, Project Power Save, which was phase one of the ESCOM rollout of changing inefficient uh, products for energy efficient products like LED lighting, energy efficient shower heads, geyser timers, etc. So we had that in our figures. Uh, but over and above that, uh, our domestic electrical products are arising. We've now completed our rollout of our shop within a shop within all the mass build stores, where we've got our own uh, destination area manned by our own staff and selling these products through. Uh, satellite continue to grow. And uh, we now in the next six months seeing uh, the growth of DTT that we're looking forward to. Yeah, DTT being digital terrestrial uh, television. How important is that to you? I think long term it's going to be significant uh, in the life of Ellie's. Uh, the company has invested in over 50 million rand in the DTT uh, for uh, in manufacture and product. and. Uh, Already, uh, even though there's a little bit of hesitation in South Africa, you know, the guys need to get around a table and sort out the issues. We've already started exporting DTT products into Africa itself. So we're not waiting for the South African scenario. We are uh, being very aggressive into Africa. Talking about television, the last time I spoke on CNBC Africa to Kurt Becker of, of NASPES, of, of course, the, the parent of, of multi-choice, his strategy for the future for NASPES was very much uh, the Internet uh, because he almost, indi we didn't almost indicate, he, he made it very clear that he thought that maybe we we're at peak television. Does that sort of ring some alarm bells for you? Uh, no. Uh, I think that if you go across the spectrum of South Africans, there's 10 million viewing households, I believe. Um, it's, it's really undercooked and I think uh, digital terrestrial television is going to bring a lot more variety, a lot more information to all these households. So if you go and have a look at uh, DSTV in South Africa, you've got around about 3 million subscribers, which means there's a remainder 7 million homes that need this kind of uh, experience and uh, not just a SABC 123 offering, but a range of at least tw uh, 20 to 30 channels offering. And you can take the same scenario and export it through into Africa because as soon as you go north of the borders into the likes of the Botswana's and that, there's very limited television in all those states. And we believe this is a massive growth area through to the next 10, 20 years. Tell us about your infrastructure division, if you would now. That also performed well. I mean, perform well, it performed fantastically. 47% increase in revenue to 370 million. Again, how did you achieve this? 
Well, it's compliments to the management of the infrastructure division. Uh, Ryan and his team have got a fantastic ability to think outside the box and have a look where infrastructure is going. So not only we concentrate on our core business, mini substations, uh, medium voltage switch gear, and that, uh, we've had our mini substations now SABC type tested, so we're going to see a lot of growth domestically in that. But we've looked at uh, energy efficiency and powering of infrastructure through energy, uh, uh, energy efficient means, especially on the telecom towers, where we've gone with our diesel generator optimization as being type tested in Africa and in the Middle East. We believe there's going to be a massive business in the future. We've got our renewable energy projects on telco towers, and now we're getting involved in uh, water purification projects where we're doing the power for these, uh, um, these sites, so two in Africa and one in South Africa. And hopefully in the very near future, we'll be offering a turnkey solution when it comes to water purification. So when you don't sit still, obviously, at least one a final question, your share register, I mean, is your company too small, for example, for the foreigners to have a look at? We speak about, uh, on Power Lunch almost every day, about the foreigners doing this with Mr. Price and that with, with ShopRite. Is Ellie's big enough for the foreigners to have a look at? I mean, they must love your business, but maybe you're just not big enough. Uh, I think we're getting a lot more interest with foreigners. We're seeing uh, investment coming in from uh, America and from Europe. And uh, I think the secret is uh, we've got around about a 50% free float. And uh, if you look at our volumes per day, they're up there. So I think that we'll land up being on the foreign investors' radar a lot more in the future.